I have seen the dark universe yawning, where the black planets roll without aim, where they roll in their horror unheeded, without knowledge or luster or name. Step carefully now, the beast makes its lair nearby. A foul thing, like most that dwells in the Underdark. Worse still, it makes its home in those black lakes found under here. Things that live underground are bound to be awful. Onkegs, giant ants, bullets, mind flares, and things that live in deep, dark waters are bound to be strange, like the Kuatoa, the Sahagan, or Kraken, not that I've ever seen one. So imagine how awfully strange, or strangely awful, this monster must be. We aren't sure what it is exactly, but good folk have gone missing topside. From Neverwinter to Baldur's Gate, they moved like under a spell, never saying a word, just leaving. Trails of strange slime leading towards caves and deeper underground still. Now it's easy to lose track of anything down here, but thanks to that lovely Tolkien mushroom, we know where its nest is, and how big it is. We know it's at least 50 feet long, and has a bunch of slimy tentacles, three glowing red eyes, and a mouth like a lamprey's, full of sharp teeth. We've got to kill it, and fast. We've already seen what's become of the beast's victims. That poor wretch, whoever he was, was a madman, flesh soft and jiggly as sponge cake, and that slime all over him. Gods smelled like a rotten fish barrel in the sewers of Waterdeep after a ten day. And that mad look in his eye, raving about some great one or other. Well, no need to be afeard. You all look like a capable bunch. Regular veteran adventurers, I'd imagine. Between you and me, we'll be back to the gate with a fresh monster head and- Oh! Hell's fire! Can't see a damned thing down here. Well, I've found the lake, at least. <laughs> oh, bloody... It's more of that shite-smelling slime. Something's wrong. Won't come off my bloody skin. What was that? Did you hear that? Come. Come to me, children of Toral. And serve. What? Where? Why does it feel like it's in my head? Can't... Breathe! If you will not serve as my puppet, then better serve as nourishment. <laughs> so, so, something... Something has my life! Can you feel it? That sensation in your primitive brains, reverberating with my every thought. Your heart beats so hard it threatens to burst through your ribs, or lodge itself in your throat. Your nervous system is flooding your body with chemicals and energy, urging you to run. But you can't. For what part of your mind you deign to call evolved has shut down. It panics. You can't decide to run or fight. I know from those I have devoured that all you pitiful species call this sensation fear. The most vivid memories of those I have consumed are always wrought with such emotions. I would pity you your lack of knowledge of your own psyche were I capable. You are all not but food and memory, and both so terribly fleeting. You do not even remember your first words, your first time seeing the stars. You keep it under lock and key. Whether the lock be a language or library, they all fade, all forgotten, or change so much that the original knowledge of your elders might as well have been forgotten. But we do not forget. We cannot forget. I recall the first of you bipedal apes, humans, venturing down here to slay me. 
I remember back when the elves came from the blood of Corlan, and the dwarves forged upon Moradin's anvil. Even though such events took place before the making of my own flesh, for we share our memories with our blood. Yes, I know of your gods. I know how you invoke them. I know the power they grant in exchange for worship. But powerful as they are, I heed no gods. For when you have witnessed the births and deaths of a pantheon twice over, when you can recall the times where there were no gods, they lose their luster. Why marvel at what you will ultimately outlast? What is a god in the face of the Burum? The endless flow of time. Not even they were there at the beginning. They did not witness it as I did, as my blood and memory did. When the vastness of the Astral Sea was crushed under the sound of silence so great it could suffocate entire planets, I have seen the bedrock upon which Mount Celestia was born. I remember the hideous glow of the shard which birthed the abyss. So invoke your gods, but know it for the cold comfort it is. They cannot slay me. They cannot grant you the power needed to slay me. The light of Lathander does not reach here. The blade of tear cannot cut me. The shadows of Shar, the eyes of Saloon, are meaningless, as short-sighted and blind as those that invoke their names. Mistra, goddess of magic. I remember well the pitiful state she was in, cast out of the heavens for the folly of the dead three. Bereft of power, she was made the plaything of Bane, the scourge of Merkel. Mistra and Midnight, a goddess split in twain, reconstructed, only to be obliterated once more by Helm, who once called her friend, then born again to rule over the Weave. Do your feeble minds comprehend yet? Do your brains have the capacity to truly grasp the depth of your error? intruding upon my domain with intentions to end me. I can sense it still. Your minds are as a children's book to me. Can you feel the cold, slick grasp of my aberrant mind within your own? Even now it spreads like mold, and your minds are powerless against it. And you wish to kill me? Death is a defeat that cannot be allowed. I am and shall remain beyond death. Hope, strength, faith, skill, wisdom. You are the shining lights of your world, but I am not of your world. I am the vast darkness of the void which fills the astral sea. I consume entire planets. I suffocate gods. I fill your minds with dread your souls with despair, for I am the unknown, the unknowable. In this endless tale of creation, destruction, and things beyond, what are you in the face of one who has witnessed it all? What is even the hottest, brightest of suns against the suffocating, fathomless cold of the void? The stars themselves are merely dead echoes already lost to the void before you even set eyes upon the light cast by their death throes. What are you in the face of the eldest? But do not despair yet, for even though your lights are mere blinks in my eyes, they will serve. My mucus has infected your flesh and minds. You will take your only fitting place as my aquatic servants. And in time, you will serve again as food, nourishing my timeless body and timeless intellect. You will praise me as you once praised your fleeting gods. 
the knowledge of my name alone will fill you with rapture and fear and ecstasy so alien it will drive you to madness. You would need two extra mouths to pronounce my name properly. But from this moment on, you serve the Great One, the eldest of all Aboliths. Come to me now, children of Toro, and serve. Thank you for watching. On this channel, I put together narrative D&D lore videos. A special thank you to my patrons who help keep the channel going and bringing more content to you. You can become a patron too and see all of my videos early and totally ad-free, as well as vote on next video topics. Also be sure to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out these other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!